index. So we try to use this too much. I wish you had the watch last year. I didn't tell it enough. So the higher end clients would also be famous for using weapons, but not as quite as fancy. This is the kind of thing they have. Called the Scottish Dune Pistol. Hold this pistol young lady, tell me if it's heavy. <laughs> but heavy yeah. now, the Scottish Dune Pistol, as you can see, is made entirely of metal. It doesn't have a wooden handle. And this came about by pure accident. The blacksmith in the town of Dune used to collect old nails. And one day he melted the nails down, took his hand at building a pistol. When he finished it, he thought, it's quite heavy, no one will buy that. So he put it on the wall of his shop and forgot all about it. One day a wealthy clan chief was riding through the town of Dune. You can play the part of the wealthy clan chief. Right? His horse lost a shoe. So he brings the horse to the blacksmith, who's putting the shoe in the horse, and he noticed the pistol and took it from the display. Oh, it's metal. He asked the blacksmith who made it. I say, sir, who made this pistol? Oh, I made that pistol, sir, yeah. Sir. Would you sell it? Yes, I would sell it to you. Uh, you couldn't make maybe another five or six, sir. could you? Yes, sir, could you? For the gentry of the clan. Now, because he got that order, he thought, hmm, the there's a market in this. In a very resourceful Scotsman, he started to produce these pistols. Within a few years, Highlanders were coming to Dune to buy them. They liked them for two reasons. First, they made entirely of metal, they were very strong, and this meant if they didn't have any bullets for your gun, you could turn it around and club people on the head with it. <laughs> but it's this thing that was clever. Come this close and see this. There's a little clip here. And the clip was something that most other European pistol makers have not considered. It meant you could actually stick it into your belt like that. So if you had one around and you were suddenly attacked, you could pull the pistol from your belt and fire it at your attacker. If you missed him, you then throw the pistol at his head. <laughs> Now, would any younger members of the audience by any chance know a very small knife used by the Highland Clans? Do you know what it was called? What it was called? Was it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Remember? No? Maybe not? Ski and Do. Well done, my man. Ski and Do. And many people know the name of Ski and Do, but they don't know what it means. In Gaelic, it means the black knife. It comes from the fact that the handle was made from black bogwood. Traditionally, people make ski and do's out of all sorts of things these days, but if it's not made of proper black bogwood, it isn't a proper ski and do. Now, the Highlanders used to carry this in the breast pocket of their jacket, although most people put them in their sock these days. And this was used to eat your food with. If you went to another Highlander's house, there was no fork and knife for you, so you had to get this to cut your food. Well, let's imagine I tell up at this man's door. It's pouring a rain and up his door. Oh, hello, Highlander, it's raining quite heavily. Can I come in and shelter in your house? No problem, but leave your weapons at the door. And that was the tradition, yeah? Your weapons at the front door. You would take your ski and do and tuck it into your sock so you could see you had a knife with you. And that way you would indicate you'd like to have something to eat. We've got a lovely piece of venison. <laughs> venison? Oh, oh, could you smell it? It's oh, fantastic. Yeah, that's a piece of venison. Thanks oh, for there's salmon, salmon for you. Like. Oh, salmon <laughs> for me. Okay. In the 18th century, salmon was known as a poor man's food. The wealthy people of Edinburgh wouldn't eat it. They called it peasant's food. But I'm afraid, being a poor elder like me, that's all I get is the salmon. Now you might be enjoying a nice meal, and someone comes into the room and starts to torment you. You don't have any weapons to defend yourself, so you have to raise your skin do for defence. How did I like you? Well, the old trick was to grab the attack by the ear, pull him under the table, stab him in the neck, push him in the way, and carry on with me. <laughs> so even though it's a very small knife, it could be used as a weapon, but only as a last resort. Now speaking of food, we should show you how the Highlander used to eat. He would carry two things with him all the time. A bowl and a cup. Any guesses what they made of? Tusks. Where are the elephants in Scotland? Yeah. <laughs> I did ask to do the show a while ago, and one little girl did say, it's an elephant's tusk, and I says, where do you see elephants in Scotland? She goes, Edinburgh Hi. Zoo. Yeah. That was right. Hi. But it is isn't that. What do you think it was? Horn. Yes, cow horns. Horn. Horn. Now, the end of the cow horn is being cut off, because they don't waste anything in the highlands. That curvy bit would be put into boiling water. Because when you put a cow horn into boiling water, it goes soft. You can flatten it down, and you make a powder horn for keeping the gunpowder for your gun. The bowl, of course, is to eat your stable diet, which is oatmeal, which is carried in your spotting. If you take the oatmeal out, mix it up, eat it for your dinner. So two things I have had with him all the time. But this is probably one of the most unique things, the old Highland plant. What did we have to feed? This is called brogan. Simple piece of leather stitched at the back. If you want to go from Bamfir, perhaps, to Aberdeen, you might walk. The problem is when you arrive in Aberdeen, you've worn holes in your shoes. You can't afford to buy a new pair of shoes, so you go to the tanner and you buy a piece of leather. 
You take the lace out the back, you put that pattern onto the leather, cut out the shade and punch the holes. You made yourself a pair of shoes. But after the Battle of Culloden, many Highlanders were forced to leave their homes. They had to move to places like America and Canada. 